Thanksgiving and operation is Betty Horseman. Uh, last year, Betty Horseman was sitting up here. And uh, Celine Tenchik was up here sitting, representing uh, her husband, uh, Walter, who had been uh, participating in the invasion of Normandy. But Celine, I think, is now out in Hundley resting. Uh, but she sends her best wishes. Uh, Ken, R Ken Radnitzer is recovering from a fall, but he intends to be with us next year. Rolf Hellman and Niels Larsen, uh, they also send their best wishes. And uh, if uh, Harry Weber and Irv Abramson don't make it, they will be glad to hear that we remember them in the proceedings. So anyway, uh, having um, referenced them, we'll now begin the roll call, uh, and I'll hand this microphone uh, to Jack Weinberg, and then he'll send it across and he'll make his way down for the roll call. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jack Weinberg, 103th Division, 410th Infantry in Europe, and uh, I see many people here, I recognize you right in Europe, and I say on my behalf, and then you said everybody else on behalf, I want to come to great consideration. Russell Zapel, I was uh, in the Navy uh, Air Corps, more or less. Uh, we did operations out of the uh, Atlantic, the uh, Caribbean, the, and the Pacific Ocean, doing anti-submarine warfare, uh, convoy patrol, and air-sea rescue service. Hello. I'm kind of with a lot of heroes here. I'm one of the guys. I'm at home front. Home front. We, we thought because we, uh, we were helping the South Koreans, North Korea was going to come over here and bomb Chicago. So I had four gun sites here. A battery was on Montrose Beach, Baker Battery in Niles, Charlie Battery in Schiller Park, Dot Battery in, Sco in Skokie, Headquarters Battery, 49AAA Gun Battalion was up at Fort Sheridan. So, and, and I used to take these, it was great, i take these guns out with, to make sure they're all guns from the Second World War. So once a week, I would come Friday, pick up the guns from Montrose Beach with a five-ton, take them up to Camp Haven, Wisconsin, then I would call Fifth Army Headquarters and they'd send a plane out with a sleeve. My radar would pick it up at 3,000 feet, I'd set the cone thing for 3,000 feet, put it in, blast off, <laughs> it was it was a it was a blasting time, and this is all day Saturday. All this stuff in Lake Michigan, up in Camp Haven, Wisconsin. They wouldn't let us do it today, but I'm no hero. I'm just I'm just glad to be here with all these guys. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is John McIsaac. I served in Korea in '56 uh, in the Cold War period, and. Uh, from 56 to 57, and uh, although I didn't see any combat, we were always on the right, like we are today. Hi, I'm Don Clore, I was in the Marine Corps. I was always in the States, and uh, I want to thank all the people here that were actually in combat. And, Pray that they will keep in good health. Thank you. My name is Don Ronberg. I uh, I really don't belong up here with these uh, these uh, great veterans. I spent three years uh, at uh, Fort Bragg in North Carolina uh, in a uh, in a uh, a different type of a situation. But at any rate, it's uh, it's my pleasure to be here with all these great. Uh, these great uh, veterans of our country. Thank you. My name is Pat Gerard. I'm with the U.S. Army. I spent uh, two years in Redstone Arsenal. Because I was a graduate engineer, I was assigned to work with Warner Von Braun. We were developing a missile which was comparable to the V-2 at the time. And currently now they replace the forehead. Now we're carrying people instead. Thank goodness. My name is Richard England. I was in the uh, U.S. Navy, and I served in uh, 
San Diego, California at North Island Naval Air Station. And then I went uh, and served in Yokosuka, Japan for two years. I was on the Admiral's staff there. And uh, I, uh, I didn't see any combat, but when you go into the service, you have no choice as to what you're going to do or where you're going to be. My name is Judith. I'm here representing my father, Norman Berkman, Master Sergeant, World War II, and spy. Uh, in the Cold War, he became an interrogator. Now, there was a lot of documentation that he got out of the Army with, and I asked him, I said, how did you get out with all this stuff? I would think that the Army would have confiscated it. And he says, well, he says, I was trained in covert operations as a spy. <laughs> there was a lot of documentation. Hello, I'm Roger Salmon. I was a training sergeant at the Infantry, Infantry Replacement Training Center in Little Rock, Arkansas. I too wasn't a, what I call a hero for the war, but what I was doing was important because a lot of guys who I was able to train before they were sent overseas, maybe they benefit from, uh, from something what I, what I had done. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Bill Kohler. I spent my entire eight years in the Air Force, all in electronics. Interestingly enough, I didn't work much on aircraft per se because I was always inside working in the shops doing repair. Did a lot of training as well. Traveled in a lot of places. I was in Vietnam, Canaan Bay, which is a friendly area, but I was in the Philippines, also in a couple bases here in the States. And it was a great experience. I am glad to say, though, that the electronics that we did controlled the various instruments that, that was used to fire the rockets, the guns, and combat. Most of them were fighter aircrafts. 86 were training, hundreds, F-4s, F-4Cs. And, of course, we also assisted the Navy. Interestingly, one for me for Vietnam, they sent me to Clark. I would repair something. I'd go to Cameron to swap out with some Navy guy. He would come take the equipment, give me the bad one, I'd go back and repair. But it was a lot of fun, educational, per se, as far as travel, and grateful to be able to help all those troops that were on the ground. Thank you. Hi, I'm Fred Ziegler. Uh, I was in the 6th Tank Battalion assigned to the 24th Infantry Division. In 1951. My name is Ray Marchetta. I was with the 222nd Station Hospital. We were at Guadalcanal on oh, the first days of uh, 42, and uh, we were at Benica and the Russells and other places. I was at quite a number of places. I was at Kwajalein and the Marshalls, and uh, I'm happy to be here. As there were five in my gang, we all came back with all of our pieces, so we're very grateful to God. And everybody. I'm just a temporarily. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Hi, I'm Bill Ship. I live in Niles. Live in Niles for forever. <laughs> and I was uh, in the in the army, and I met my wife, who. At that time, we weren't married, but we, after the war, why we, we decided to uh, get married, and that's, she isn't with us now, 
but I remember her and I remember all of the people who have ever been here before. It's all the people that are thankful, not to me, but because I had a front row seat. And it was uh, fun. I had a front row seat because I was small. And they thought that was thing for me to uh, do and I want to uh, thank everybody for supporting me. Uh, I'm Ira Graham and uh, a friend of mine uh, got into officer training. His name was Alan Milak, a neighbor. Uh, he, but he urged me to join the Navy before I was drafted, which I did. And we communicated I was at Great Lakes and he was at Hunter College in New York. Patton wanted more troops than officers and so he was put into the infantry as a sergeant instead of an officer. I was thinking of him all the time. But in the Navy, I was sent to the Philippines where I, but my ship wasn't in Samar when I got there. They moved me further south to Leyte, it wasn't there either. I saw it in Hollandia, New Guinea, but it was leaving port. I figured it'd be back at the end of the day or something, but when I found out that they were going to the Philippines, uh, I urged uh, some people that, something like a Mr. Roberts, try to get onto that ship and into the real, real duty, and they flew me Island skipping with some equipment that uh, was being used for uh, the base, and I finally got on my ship. I do think of my friend Alan Milak continually, and I'm very pleased that I was in the Navy. Thank you. Hi. <clears throat> I'm Bud Besser. I lived in Niles for 10 years back in the 50s and 60s. And I founded the Bugle newspaper, which is still going on here in the Niles. As far as the Army goes, well, <laughs> uh, I was in several outfits. I was in the Air Cadet program for a year. And in 1944, they really didn't need any more pilots. So they eliminated us, and I went to the amphibious uh, infantry, in which we, uh, <clears throat> we uh, prepared to... Uh, do infantry work, and he, when we got into an invasion of some type, we finally got to the Rhine River, and when we got to the Rhine River, they said they're not going to use us because the Navy had experience in D-Day, in D -Day, and they would be much better in, in doing the work than what we would do. Um, I, I said I was never a hero. I was just one out of 15 million men, and um, I know this isn't very cooperative for people that support it, but there's a program in which you go to Washington, and you spend a day in Washington, and then you come back, which is a great program, but when I hear it on television, they say, here comes the heroes, and here come the heroes back. Well, you're looking at one person who was no more a hero than most of the fellows that were in the service. Uh, I want to be, I want to thank the people who supported us. It was a terrific experience. I was an 18 year old when I went in, 21 when I went out, and it was just the beginning. Thank you. My name is Art Shapiro. I served in World War II and Mark Clark's Occupation Force in Austria. I can't believe it's seven, over 70 years ago. <laughs> and I also want to say Max and I met in front of me. We were neighbors in 1935. <laughs> I'm Charles Nats from the United States Marine Corps. I was in the Marines and uh, we were in heavy shelling and 
70% were killed. There was only 30% left. And then the Marines come and rested us, and they blew my ears out. That's why I cannot hear. I can't hear. So I, I, I don't know what else to tell you, but I know uh, Neil O'Shea wouldn't allow that to happen. And simplify. <laughs> Matthew Oitasek, World War II veteran, uh, U.S. Army. I served from 1942 to 1945. I was with the 82nd Airborne Division, which consisted of paratroopers and glider troopers. I was a glider trooper, and uh, I see quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of action when we. Went First of all, I'm the senior commander at the uh, New Niles Post 3579, located at the White Eagle. In case uh, uh, people don't uh, know, uh, Park Ridge Post and Niles Post merged together. Uh, Park Ridge uh, had a solid place because of financial problems, we couldn't afford it. So Niles came in and merged with us. So we're now Niles Post 3579, located at the White Eagle Site 200. Uh, we got a facility there, 5,000 square feet. We totally re redone it, rejuvenated it. It's a beautiful post. And I'd like to announce our Veterans Day Ceremony, which is going to be held Saturday, November 11th, at Tui and Milwaukee Avenue at the Waterfall at 11 o'clock. I'd like to see you all out there to, uh, to uh, have a, a nice doing. And after the event, everybody is welcome to come back to the post, uh, the Niles Post and the White Eagle. Site 200, and we'll have refreshments. We have uh, Walgreens is coming out there to get flu shots to all the veterans. So we'd like to see as many people out there as we can. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. And now we'll move back to our, our seats at the tables carefully and. Uh, <laughs>